don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So June has been a very busy month or was a very busy month since we're now in July <clears throat> um, and I am more than aware that I had not had time or hadn't put time aside um, to do my two heroes and heroines pages, pages for June. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and catch up and squeeze them in whenever I can over the next couple of weeks, today being one of them. So today I'm going to be doing my hero for June, who happens to be somebody called Eric Arthur Blair, known to you as George Orwell. Okay, so I've got my Heroes and Heroines journal and I've got my bits and pieces that I want to do to create my page on this side. So there's a photograph of Eric Arthur Blair, also known as George Orwell. Um, so he was born on the 25th of June 1903 in India um, to middle class kind of parents um, who worked for, um, believe it or not, um, worked for a company which imported or exported opium, uh, medicinal opium, believe it or not, um, to China. So it was grown in India uh, and then it was shipped to, uh, to China, as if the Chinese didn't have their own or enough of their own, but hey-ho. Um, so that's what his parents uh, did um, in India. Um, and he stayed there um, not very long um, because soon after he was born his mother decided that she wanted to raise him in England um, along with his siblings uh, and therefore moved back very very shortly afterwards. Um, there we go. So what I'm doing here is um, because of some of the colours particularly in this book cover is black and red I decided I was going to put borders um, of black, not black, red, all over everything, uh, or behind everything. So give them a, a little bit of a red outline, but I'm using dark red. So I'm just going to grab some glue, and I'm just going to use a dry glue for this lot. Because I shouldn't imagine, it's, it's not going to take a long time to do this page. There's not that many elements, because although, um, Orwell wrote um, quite a few books in his time. There was only one, well, one or two really, that um, that spoke to me enough to make him one of my heroes, if you like. And that obviously was 1984. Um, wasn't particularly a fan of Animal Farm. Um, I don't like the way that's sticking down at all. Quickly pull that off. I might have to use some spirit glue. This is Colol spirit, multi-purpose spirit glue um, that I've just decanted into a small, a fine, a finer applicator. Although it is a bit gummy if you do leave it for a while. It has been rather warm here the last couple of days. There we go, that's probably going to do it. Anyway, so on to, or carrying on with the history of Eric Arthur Blair. Um, so yeah, his, his mother moved back to England. Father didn't. Um, he actually didn't see much of his father at all. In fact, he only ever saw him kind of once um, over the next few years um, when his father came over for a visit and um, hardly saw anything of him at all. A definite absentee father figure. That will do. That will do. I'm not going to make it perfect. Um, so yes, but so his education. Obviously, he received um, standard kind of middle class education, but then um, received a scholarship to Eton um, in 1917. So obviously, that tells you he was his family wasn't exactly poor. Um, but it was a scholarship, so obviously it wasn't paid for by him um, or his family. Um, and it was there that he kind of got the nickname of Laurel, um, as in Stan Laurel, because he was over six foot tall 
and kind of gangly and very ungainly and apparently um, very clumsy and prone to tripping over and knocking things over. And that's where he got the nickname of Laurel. So after his education was complete, um, in 1922, he joined the Burmese police force. So left for Burma in 1922. Um, didn't really have much of an exciting career there. Found that he found the work very, very boring. Um, so much so that he obviously started writing um, just essays and articles, nothing major. Um, but got bored and returned back to England in 1927. That's my backdrop. So I've taken a picture of Big Brother from the movie starring John Hurt. And I've just overlaid that with the famous catchphrase. So that's going to be my background. Here we go. So, 1984. So 1984 wasn't actually published until 1949 after the Second World War. His first book was Animal Farm, which was actually published in 1945, a full four years after, uh, sorry, before 1984. But before all that, um, Oh, was it actually injured fighting with the Spaniards during the Spanish Civil War in 1936? Um, and then he returned back to England after that. And then obviously shortly after the Second World War broke out, but because he was injured, um, got shot in the throat, apparently. Obviously not killed, but got shot in the throat. Um, and it took him a while to recuperate. So he wanted to enlist for Second World War, but they wouldn't have him because of his, his injuries. And so eventually got a job working for the BBC. Um, basically doing propaganda or anti-propaganda, if you like, anti-Nazi propaganda which obviously gave him all the fuel that he needed working for the Ministry of Information. Uh, sorry, working for the Ministry of Information, working for the BBC, which for them obviously worked for the government. Um, all the fodder that he needed for his little dystopian um, story of 1984. I mean, one of the reasons why um, I'm including him in this book is because um, I was given, oh, I was given a copy of the book um, 1984 on my 16th birthday um, in 1984 um, and I was a, back then I was an avid reader um, and I absolutely loved it um, I was supposed to put in that on some red paper wasn't I um, and one thing my biggest takeaway from reading 1984 is exactly this and this says never trust your own eyes believe what you are told <laughs> yeah so my biggest takeaway was the exact opposite of that so never just believe what you're told always believe the evidence of your own eyes which is one of the things which has always stuck with me so even when we're told things are so um, it's always best not to just take things at face value but to do your own research and look into things and then draw your own conclusion and your own opinion from that. There's nothing worse than being told what your opinion is.
Okay, oh, I'm being very clumsy today. Okay, so <clears throat> what happened to him? Well, he died at a very young age. Um, he died at the age of 46 from tuberculosis. Um, his first wife, Eileen, um, died um, at the end of the Second World War, 1945. She went into hospital for a routine hysterectomy and unfortunately uh, the operation went bad uh, and she ended up dying on the operating table. Um, whereas he contracted tuberculosis. Um, I'm switching between glues because some of the larger items I think need a stronger glue. Um, yeah. There we go. But by all accounts, um, he was a very large, like I said, ungainly, gangly, um, clumsy chap, but apparently very well mannered, very, very polite, but obviously he had very, very strong opinions and very, very strong views, um, as so many of them did. Uh, and obviously, lots of them totally outdated these days. Um, You know, at that time, society wasn't as enlightened as it is now. But his books and his ideas, and particularly in 1984, the fact that you know a lot of what he wrote um, is very, very um, was prescient. Um, you know, the, the way forward, the way our society has moved with tracking and CCTV cameras and um, being tracked online which he would never have been able to um, have guess about the internet way back in you know the 1940s but you know he really did know and understood about the power um, of being able to change the way people think through language and information. I mean, in the same way, I suppose, that, that the Nazis tried to ban certain books and burnt books. Um, and I know similar sort of things are happening like over in the States at the moment. Um, some books, children's books, are being banned from libraries and <clears throat> you know, all sorts of things like that which, you know, because of the supposed content, I mean, things like Harry Potter, for goodness sake, being banned in some states because it's witchcraft. Um, I even heard that, um, like, Charlotte's Web um, had been banned in, in some states and things like that, just ridiculous. Even, I think, what was it The Wizard of Oz? <laughs> For some strange godforsaken reason. But hey ho. Anyway, so um yes, so George Orwell, or Eric Arthur Blair, as I've said, um died on the twenty fifth of January nineteen fifty at the age of forty six from tuberculosis. Um which was very sad indeed. So where am I putting this? I'm going to put this just here. Just underneath the big brother eye. But like I said, the book had a lasting effect on me um, at the tender age of 16. Um, and it's, it's some of the themes and some of the things in that book have stayed with me, you know, to this day. So even though it may not have been the nicest of men, um, when it was talking about government control and control in the masses, um, he certainly knew what he was talking about. And obviously, history has borne that out. So there you go. So that is my first June Heroes and Heroines page for George Orwell. So I hope you enjoyed watching me put that together and listen to me ramble on. <laughs> if you did, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very very soon and don't forget big brother is watching you
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel-only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.